Hey everyone, Sobe here. Today I'm going to walk you through how to create a digital collage in Google Drawing. First things first, I need you to get into your Google Drive. Open up your Google Drive. You can see mine is right here. A lot of yellow. I've been focusing on yellow a lot this year, I guess. And what I'm going to have you do is go to New. And then obviously there's Doc Sheet Slides. We're going to hit More. We're not going with our stereotypical Google usage here. You're going to go into a Google Drawing. I wonder if you've ever used Google Drawing before. You might not have. It's a new, it's not new, but it might be new to you. Now, to be honest, this isn't the best program for creating a digital collage, but it's the program that we all have access to. So we're going to use this program today. You can change the name up in the left-hand corner. I'm just going to take you on a quick tour. Um, so we can change the name here. You can call it, um, I'm going to call it Sobe's Digital Collage. There we go. This is obviously our canvas for creation. There are a few of your standard tools here like shape, text, and inserting an image. Um, and then if you need to zoom in, there's zoom or you, zoom, or you can go to file, zoom, okay, or view, zoom, all right in here. Again, I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with these standard tools. Once you have this file open, in your Google Drive. We are going to add our pictures that you collected from yesterday. Mine are sitting on my desktop right here on the side. Uh, yours might be saved to a specific place on your Chromebook. If that's the case, you can just go to Insert Image, Upload from Computer, and find them. They will likely be under Documents or Desktop. Mine are under Desktop. They kind of all they're a little bit hard to see, but I know that they're also right here. So I'm going to drag and place them. Well, to be honest, you didn't really need to find specific shapes because we can make shapes in here. So if you want to delete the shapes that you found and make your own shapes in here, you're welcome to do that. So I'm going to delete those. Here's my plant, my object, and my person. Now, this is the, where the fun begins. You get to play. Play around. Now, there are a few things that you are going to be able to play around with, and I'm going to walk you through these things. We're going to talk about playing around with size, placement, and duplication. So size, placement, and duplication. So if you want to play around with size, obviously, one of the first things you can do is resize something by using the corner arrows uh, and your mouse on this uh, box here. Okay, so I would suggest using a corner arrow. Um, Google is great because if you resize using the corner arrow, they maintain its uh, proportion. It won't squash. But if you go to one of these arrows, then it'll squash. We don't like squashing. We don't like squashing. So make sure you're using a corner arrow or a corner of the bounding box when you decide to resize. So that is how you resize. Remember, a great thing about collage is that you can kind of play around with the size and the placement and create really interesting juxtapositions and placements that wouldn't necessarily happen in real life. So first, that was resizing using the bounding box. Next up is we can play around with size and cropping. To crop an image in Google Drawing, you double click on it, and you'll notice that the box gets slightly darker. And instead of the, of the little boxes, we have these um, black lines that you can drag to crop an image. So let's say I want to crop so that we just see the top part of Elvis Presley here wearing his yellow jacket. There we go. So you, again, you double click on an image. If I want to make, uh, you see how big this box is compared to the flower. If I double click, even though it's a transparent image, I can click on the click and drag those black bars and I can just make it smaller and that will make it easier for me to navigate even though there's no visual difference here. Same thing with this shoe make it easier for me to navigate. 
So that's resizing and cropping. Placement. Placement. Okay, so placement, obviously, um, you can start to play around with how you're going to arrange things, what you want on top of what. But let's say it's flowers behind Elvis. How do I get them behind Elvis? So if I want to move an object behind another object, you right click, go to order, and then you can hit send backward or send to back. So if I want the flowers in the very back, kind of peeping out behind the frame of Elvis, that's how I get the flowers behind him. If I want to bring them back forward, I right click, go to order, bring to front. Easy does it. So that's one element, uh, one aspect of placement. Another thing you can do with placement is rotate. If you notice our bounding box here, it has this little extension with the circle. If I click and drag, I can rotate these flowers however I want. So if I want them to be more diagonal, so they're kind of um, resting on top of the corner of the box, I can put them like this. So that's rotation and moving something forward and backward in terms of placement. Uh, another thing we can do is flip and reverse images. So again, if you right click on a shape or on a box, all of the pretty much all of the format options are there. You can even find crop image, you can go to order and send it forward or backward, you can rotate it more specifically. But under rotate, you can see it says flip horizontally or flip vertically. So if I flip horizontally, he flipped horizontally. If I go back and change it, or if I hit undo, there we go. If I want to flip him vertically, I don't know why I would do that, but I guess I could. Let's just see what happens. Where's rotate? Flip vertically. Oh no, he's upside down. There he is. So in terms of placement, we just covered rotate, flip, and then again bringing objects forward and bringing objects backward. So I'm going to go and show you how to bring a shape in right now. Um, if you want it to be a perfect circle, make sure to hold down shift and it'll constrain the proportions for you. All of the shapes that you create will be this baby blue color. If you want it to be a different color, like a yellow, you can go to the fill bucket, make it like a neon yellow. They will also automatically have a black outline. I don't like outlines, so I'm going to get rid of it. You might feel a little different. So I have this circle, and then for my second shape, I think I'm going to do a square. Mm -hmm. Let's make it like a paler yellow. Again, no outline, because that's me. And what I'm going to try to do is recreate this collage that I made uh, earlier this weekend. Okay, so I have, this was my final example. So let me show you how I did that. You already know all the tools. You know how to resize. You know how to crop you know how to rotate, you know how to flip, you know how to send something forward and backward. So the only thing left to talk about is how do we make an interesting arrangement. Now there are a few tips for you. Um, first is to play around with overlapping. You don't want your items the way that they are right now on my page, which is all separate. That's not really a decent collage. What we want to do is try to combine them in a way that feels interesting and natural. So you want to create an interesting arrangement through overlapping. So I'm going to set this square and kind of resize it into a rectangle here. Uh, and I want to send it behind Elvis. So I'm going to right click, go to order, send back. And then I have him as like a little frame at the top. Um, I remember overlapping the shoe and just feeling like I didn't quite like it that way. So I went and flipped it horizontally so it was facing this way. Maybe I'll resize it a little bit so it's also sticking out of the box. Let me go back. I kept Elvis more of, more of a full... If you crop something and you don't like the way it cropped, you can always change it back, which is what I'm doing right now, changing it back. All right. I'm going to bring that shoe down here. Good.
and here's when I can start to duplicate things. So if I want more than just this flower, what I can do is copy and paste it. Shortcut is Command C, Command V, and a second one appears. Super fun. Another thing you can do is just go to File, nope, wrong one, Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. Okay, Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. But again, Command C, Command V is going to be the uh, fastest way to do it. Uh, if you do this, I suggest kind of switching it up a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural that these flowers um, don't seem like you just copied and pasted them. Did them. You can even resize them a little. If I want some flowers on this side. But I think in my original, yeah, I only have the two. There we go. All right. Now I do want the shoe to come in front of the flower, so it looks like the flowers are almost coming out of the shoe. So I'm going to go to Order, Bring to Front. There you go. Now it looks more like the flowers are kind of bursting out of the shoe. I have this, or this uh, bright yellow circle, and I'm going to copy and paste it. Command C, Command V. And I'm going to add one right over that converse keep it big. What's so fun about collage and really the best part of it is how much you get to play. You can just play and move things and if it doesn't look right that's fine. It's not permanent. You can just move it around again. That's what makes it so amazing and so experimental and so fun is that sense of experimentation, that sense of play. So lean into that. Have fun with it. Create something weird. Weird stuff is interesting. Don't be boring. It's life advice. Don't be boring. Uh, just a word of advice in terms of compositions. Odd groupings are generally better than even groupings. So I have a cluster of three here. I have one, two, and then the flowers kind of count as three. So I have this balance of three and three on the corners. And I think that's a pretty good... I had the shoe way bigger in this one. That's okay. That's just a change. All right. So we went through size, placement, duplication. Um, and overlapping and grouping in terms of your odd groupings in terms of your composition. When you are finished playing, oh, cat, and so PNGs allow you to download and save as a PNG. Then what we could do, now wouldn't this be fun? What if we combined all of our transparent collages into one classroom collage? one class digital collage, one giant Google drawing of all of our collages all mashed up. Let's think about it. If you are confused about any aspect, just go rewind the video. The video is here. It's permanent. It's going to stay here forever. Rewind the video. Go back. Rewatch it. Find that part where you were confused. Rewatch it again. And then just try it. Again, the worst thing that's going to happen if you click around is, I don't know, you might make like a weird shape or something. Okay? And then you can just delete it. So just click around. Experiment. Have fun. Try new things. And we'll see you. We'll see what you create.